All right, so remember last episode, I told you I was going to install this window here by C.R. Lawrence? Well, I did that. I filmed the whole episode and then accidentally reformatted the SD card and deleted it. So instead in this episode, I finished off all of the walls and installed the shower. So the window came out great, by the way. And it opens over here, tilts out, has a screen. So I also have this magnetic insulated cover that just sticks on there. I'll put a link for this and for the window. This is what I use for the ceiling. It's a really thin cedar. It's very lightweight and I get it from Home Depot. A little on the expensive side, but there's really not very much square footage, so it doesn't matter too much. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chalk line and I'm gonna find the center point on the van. And I can do that by basically connecting a line, the chalk line, from the center of the two fans right in the, the middle there. Then I can start from the middle and work out from each direction. You can see now I got a nice line right down the center and we can start our planking from there. This planking's pretty thin. You are gonna need to pre-drill. So the other reason to pre-drill is so later on we can hide the screws and fill it with wood putty. So you can see I just uh, followed the blue line for the first one. So now that I've set the first one straight, the rest should all line up perfectly. As I put up each panel, I'm putting a little bit of uh, wood glue. This will stop that creaking sound that you hear when you're driving around. Once you get past this middle section here where the fans are, you can't use the full lengths anymore because uh, they're not long enough. So you have to start using cuts. I really like to stagger the seams so you don't just see like one line of cuts going all the way across. It looks a lot better that way, I think. And then we're gonna start, the next row is where the lights are gonna be, so we're gonna have to cut those little holes for the lights there. I know I'm gonna have cabinets on this side, so you might be tempted to just center the lights, but I'm only gonna have cabinets on that side. So what you wanna do is actually offset the lights. So I'm gonna have this first row after the fan here, we'll have the lights. And then on this side, it'll be the second row. So it'll be more centered once the cabinets are in on, on what's left of the ceiling. And I'm just using this two and three eighths drill bit, which fits the light perfectly. I'll put a link for the lights and for the drill bit. Almost done with the ceiling. It's got the last two pieces. They're always the hardest to cut. It's crazy little shapes. I'll try and put those in right now. Ceiling's officially done. Now I can just take the wood putty and fill all the screw holes and then just sand it down and paint it. are filled and sanded down so now I can begin the painting. I just finished the painting of the ceiling. It took three coats. What I usually do is just put one coat and then take this uh, sander and do a very light sanding, get all the rough spots off and then two more coats, and that gives it like a real nice, smooth, like furniture type finish. You might be wondering why I'm painting the ceiling before I did the walls and everything. It's just because I want to put the lights in and the cover plates on the fan, and you can't really do that until you have painted the ceiling. I just cut that loop that we made on the previous episode, so now we have two positive and two negative. We can split these wires. I use this tool, if you don't have one of these, these are really great to uh, 
take the insulation off the wires. I'll put a link for this in the description. Makes it a lot easier. We'll just take one of our lights. These come in the four pack. And we'll just connect the three negatives. Get a wire nut. And then connect the three positives. Another wire nut. Kind of stuff the wires back in there. And then these uh, little prongs here are just hold it in place like that. Snap right in. That's it. So this is what it looks like with all the lights in. So now I can put in the two fan covers. That's gonna require some cutting. I have to cut them down the size. So the first thing you wanna do is put this in place and then make a little mark on each side of how far it goes in. Now we basically need to cut off the opposite of this. We need this much room on the bottom. So we'll just take some measurements and transfer the line. And now I can just take the jigsaw and just cut along the line, cut this top piece off. Now that I have this cut down to size, I can uh, make the electrical connection here. And we can get rid of some of this excess wire. Cut these right here. By the way, in this case on this fan, uh, black is gonna be positive and white will be negative. And I'm going to use this little kit here to make the connections. A bunch of different options to connect. And just kind of push the wire in here. Now we can just uh, put the cover plate on. It should push right in. And that's it. Just uh, have to put the four screws in now. Remember these are the screws we had left over from when we installed the fan with the white paint on the top. So I've got eight here, four for the front and four for the back. So normally when I finish the ceiling, the next thing I do is work on the walls. But in this situation, I'm putting in a shower right there. So first I need to frame out the shower walls before I put shiplap up. So I'm taking some measurements right now and going to cut a plywood backing for that wall there first. I'm just gonna use some thin plywood for that. So I got the first two walls in. Now that I know exactly where the shower pan's going to go, I can drill a pilot hole through the drain hole there, measured, and it looks like I'm gonna be in an okay spot right there. But we'll drill a small pilot hole first to make sure. This is where I'm at with the shower stall here. This thing has been way more difficult than I was expecting. I've had to buy and return four different shower pants. Most of the shower pans have the drain hole in the center there. And on the uh, ProMaster, there's a huge steel beam that runs right down where that drain would be. So I bought a few different ones. None of them would work. I had to keep returning them. Finally found this one that has a drain hole in the corner, which I'm gonna put in that top corner right there. And it looks like this one's gonna work. I already drilled the pilot hole. It's in a spot that's gonna work. So now I'm just uh, sorting out how to drill for this uh, drain here. And I need to drill the drain before I put the other two plywood panels on because the plywood's going to sit, it kind of comes over the shower pan. And then I'll put um, probably a vinyl that looks like a tile over the plywood to finish it off. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I eliminated two lights. Remember I spoke about earlier how always plan ahead where you put your lights. You don't want them to be right up against your cabinets. And there I go, I forgot about the uh, shower stall. So <laughs> I removed the two lights, I patched them, and I'd say that's a pretty damn good patch. I don't think you can see it. I can't see it, so you probably can't. Got a couple touch-ups on the paint from putting the walls in, but the patches are good. I'm just gonna use the two-inch drill bit to drill through the shower pan. Once I get through the shower pan, I'm gonna pull the uh, shower pan out 
and then switch to the two and three eighths drill bit. That'll uh, make a bigger hole going all the way through the van. So I have plenty of room for this nut here, but I can't use the two and three eighths over here because there won't be enough material for this to grab to on the shower pan. So I'm just gonna go through far enough that I see the bit poking through at the bottom and then I'll finish the rest at the bottom of the van. I can go underneath the van and finish the rest of that hole. Uh -oh. This exhaust is in the way for the drill bit. I might not be able to make the drill from the bottom. I could probably finish it from up top. But let me try my angled drill bit first, see if that works. Angled drill bit to the rescue again. I'll put a link for this thing. This thing saved me so many different times. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now we can assemble the drain. I've seen a lot of people try to silicone this, this down here, and that's not the right way to do it. The right way to do it is with plumber's putty. Let's pull a little bit out. It's like Play-Doh kind of. It's gonna create a watertight seal. Let's roll a little line like that. And then this goes around the edge here. So if you used a silicone, then if you ever needed to remove the drain, which I mean, you probably won't in this case, but if you ever needed to remove the drain, it wouldn't be possible without destroying the shower pan. This is gonna be watertight and uh, still could remove it if you ever needed to. Then you've got the rubber gasket and then the paper gasket, which just so uh, the nut doesn't scuff up the rubber. Just screw this down. So you can see it's squeezing that out, making a nice seal. Next thing I wanna do is waterproof this here. Got a little of this uh, fire sealant left over, so I'm just gonna make use of it sealing this. I'll do the rest from the bottom. You can see we got a good seal here, and then uh, after I put the pipe through, I'll seal around the pipe also. So next we just screw this little extension on and probably just leave it like this for now until I get to installing the gray water tank. Now you can see I have the whole shower framed out. I have the panel for there. Uh, I'm just sitting over here. It's all, it's all cut out to size and everything. Uh, but I'm gonna hold off on putting that in until I put the backer panels, the uh, shiplap on the back side of this wall because I need to screw in all my plumbing hardware to the back of the shiplap. Then once I put that in, then I could put the plywood piece over the front. What I think I'm going to work on next is the bed cutout, which is kind of complex because it's hard to figure out where I'm going to screw the uh, shiplap into. So I'm going to try and figure that out right now. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do with the first piece. I'm going to screw into here, here, and I made a line here. I'm going to screw this little backer in, like that. And then I should be able to screw into here, with the nail gun. And then as I go along, I'm going to stuff a little bit of insulation back here. I sprayed this purposely light with the uh, foam because it's a little bit harder to work with in these tight spaces. So I can just stuff the maximum amount of uh, the 3M Vinsolate behind the board as I go.
coming along. I'll uh, fill these with some wood putty in a little bit. I'm thinking to finish this off, this last piece, I'm going to extend this down a little bit. That way I can take a piece and it'll hang right in that groove right there. So I just need to extend that by whatever that measurement is there. And then I can uh, shoot some nails up straight up. I've extended this piece down an inch, which uh, turned out to just be a full two and a half inch piece. So now I can put the next row right here. That should line up perfectly. All right, so here's our piece. And just gonna put it on that lip there. Then we can, of course, uh, cock that later, that little seam. And then the next piece will come over to the bottom of this. And I can just shoot some nails straight up and uh, I'll add some wood glue as well. That should look pretty good. I just put this first row in kind of match the angle here. I wanted to have all the lines match up. So I'm starting here, and then I took a measurement from here. Of course, you can't level this because the van's not level, right? So I took a measurement from here to the bottom and here to the bottom. So now I know this one's nice and level if the van were to be level. And from here, I can work up and down. I'm just basically putting them in and then taking a pencil line and marking where the wall ends right there. So this whole uh, wall's done now. Uh, later on, there'll be a shelf, a little small shelf covering this area. And then once I put the shelf in, it'll come right there. And there'll be a crown molding that covers this area here. You can see here the wall's angled a little bit. So, and, and this one here is level, if the van were to be level. So because these are angled in, Eventually the, the seams won't line up. So I'll show you with this one too. You can see that the edge here starts going above this edge. So what I need to do is take a little bit off just this top part here with the table saw on this one and this one here. And that'll keep my edges lining up. So I'm just gonna take maybe a 16th of an inch off of each one. Okay, so you can see I uh, ripped about a 16th of an inch, maybe a little bit more off each of these. Now I'll see if they fit. So you can see that uh, worked out really nicely. And then uh, there's just one more piece here. Or actually two more pieces, one and then a little sliver at top.
guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so, so you can follow along with the rest of this build. And if you missed any of the previous episodes, I'll put a link in the description. By the way, did anyone notice that I put two subliminal messages in the last video and one subliminal message for 0.3 seconds in this video? If anyone noticed it, leave a comment, let me know. Thanks a lot. See you guys next time.